Hi, for those who haven't met me, I'm John Spooner. Uh, I, I thought Bob was going to talk next, and, but being the great Sergeant Major that he is, he said, nope, you're on next. <laughs> this speech, uh, my few remarks are about some of the people, I just want to thank people that have been involved in this project. And the first, to bow the rise of uh, Gideon Haig, um, I'm, I'm going to call them the indispensables. Um, these people that, without projects like this, you cannot get them off the ground. Um, and they know, no one ever hears about them normally, but they are vital. First and foremost, my wife Ingrida. After we'd been rejected by five publishers, I just I said to her, look, I'm, I'm on the point of giving up. I can't believe that, that pe no one thinks there's anyone who would want to buy this book. And some of the publishers were quite open. They said, look, you've done a good job, but we'd be mad to publish it because we fear a backlash from our reader base. <laughs> Others said um, they couldn't think there were... I think one of the major publishers said, it's a very good job, but it does appear to have a sceptical angle to it. <laughs> <laughs> and in view of that, there can't possibly be any readership for it, therefore we can't publish it. That, I'm not joking, that was exactly what happened. So, Ingrida, thank you so much, not just for keeping us on the road, but inventing the little logo, um, the Kelpie uh, logo for Kelpie Press, because we ended up self-publishing. Um, Anne Carter, Bob's lovely wife, is also the accountant for us. We, without uh, Bob and I have got no head for figures, um, and she is taking care of us. And she, if he's the sergeant major, she's a sort of left-handed general of this thing. Yeah. Russ Radcliffe, who was our project manager. Russ, um, I've been involved with for years. He produces a lot of books on cartoons, and he just provided the expert um, uh, advice on how to do this and he laid it out and he did he designed that cover I did the drawing but he designed the cover um, Frank Marirana one of our former age uh, designers he did the graphs now you, you think oh just the graphs but so much work they are so it is such a difficult thing to graphically depict say the circulation systems of the earth uh, he did it beautifully um, Dennis Jones is our, um, our uh, distributor and not, not last but not least, Rob Masters, um, <coughs> our publicist, who has the unenviable task of trying to convince people out there that they should let us onto their radio stations. And I mean, it's a it's a daunting task, and we'll see what happens. As far as the book goes, I consider Bob to be the Robert Hughes of science writing. Uh, to take the work of a atmospheric physicist and turn it into a language that an ordinary person could understand is a huge task because so much so many scientists understand basic concepts like latent heat and things like that that the average member of the reading public doesn't understand and Bob I thought did that well um, we had a lot of sessions where he was saying to me now do you understand this and I said, oh, I'll read it one more time <laughs> I think I crawled through the, some of the, the most difficult parts, but there are only a few of them. Um, generally, the book is worth studying, and that's the exciting thing about this thing. And the great tragedy of this whole debate is that it is a fascinating study, this study of climate science. Um, and uh, it's been politicised. That's the problem with it. Um, the team, Bill, Stuart, Brian and Martin, they're all experts in their field. I mean, when people say, oh, who have you got? You know, or, you know have you got an expert like a climate scientist? And, uh, and I say, well, we've got the former head of the National Climate Centre for 12 years. I go, glazed look. Oh, that couldn't be true. You know. uh, and he thinks it's all rubbish. You know. um, but Bill, of course, he's one of those people that you ring him up and you say, oh, Bill, have you just heard the latest news? You know, it backs up our theories about, you know, the Antarctic and the fact that there's... He said, oh, I don't know. And he'll, he'll always pause and give you an honest answer, which doesn't necessarily carry you forth into political action. He'll say something like, well, there's only three observation points of the Antarctic and one of them 60 feet under the ice. I don't know how they can get those figures. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's always been like that. 
Um, Stuart, uh, and Stuart will have to come up and say a few words in a minute, and I know he's right at the back somewhere, um, <coughs> is uh, a wonderful near Liverpudlian um, who has provided some fantastic expertise for Bob. And uh, Brian Leyland can't be here tonight. He's a, um, he runs a hydro power station in New Zealand, and he would have loved to have come, but he can't get across. And Martin Field, our expert on tax, um, is in Sydney, and hopefully he'll be there for a Sydney or a Canberra launch. Finally, um, in the list of thank yous, and if I have forgotten anyone, I'm grievously sorry, and probably the others will back me up. Um, I, I want to thank the, this bookshop. It's one of the havens for book lovers in Melbourne. It is one of the best books I've and Chris Redfern and the staff have been wonderful, and we thank you very much. Um, anyway, I'll, what I'll do now is hand over to Bob Carter, because I'm sure he's got some uh, interesting words on, on this whole thing. Thank you. Mm.